The Price of Friendship Caroline swore she'd last seen it in the nightstand separating her bed from Pear Lee's. Rifling through the miscellaneous objects in her allotted drawer for a second time produced a puzzling cache of items, but no hairbrush. And this time she'd emptied the drawer completely. On top of her bed covers, Caroline had neatly laid out a scavenger hunter's dream. One by one, she removed and placed the drawer's bounty on her quilt. First, she retrieved a ball of rubber bands, a fork and spoon from the Willow's dining room followed, then a pipe wrench, a small silver box, and an old toothbrush. A pack of matches came next, a can opener, an old shopping bag folded neatly into a five by seven square, then a whisk broom and a single pink birthday candle, half burned. Reaching further in, she pulled out one light duty extension cord, brown, and a faded Chicago Cubs baseball cap. Finally, stuck in the back left corner, she flicked loose an unwrapped butterscotch candy and brought it out on the end of her finger. She eyed it intently. There were a few hairs and some lint stuck to the golden nugget, but the whereabouts of her prized boar bristle hairbrush with the ornate silver plate handle remained a mystery. She popped the sticky oval in her mouth and sat down on the corner of her bed, careful not to disturb the chaotic matrix of odds and ends while she retraced her step. Once she found her hairbrush, she'd need to come back to her miscellaneous inventory and decide what, if anything, to throw away. She figured, since space was a premium at the Wilting Willows, she must have had a very good reason for stashing each one of the items, although most of the stuff didn't look at all familiar or useful to her, except for her lucky cubby's hat and the butterscotch, of course. She heard Paralee's wheelchair clunk against the door as it shushed open. Paralee never knocked or announced herself. She simply rolled up on you like a fog bank, whether you liked it or not. Caroline gave up trying to give her roommate subtle cues and actual hints regarding her various social faux pas after their first week together. She could see by then it would do neither of them any good. Life was short, right? Paralee seemed to get some pleasure out of trampling on convention, and since Caroline had never known anyone so rebellious, she was a tad bit in awe of her. Thus, she happily tolerated what she called her eccentricities. To her, Paralee was almost a celebrity. Unbeknownst to themselves, each one of the elder women had begun to regard the other with growing affection. They did their best to hide this so as not to appear too vulnerable to the other. Indeed, it was becoming an interesting alliance, although somehow still in the negotiation phase. Some of the more docile and prudish residents of the Willows often referred to the duo as the Bonnie and Claudia of the Cotton Top Mafia. They could see this was a rare friendship. What's doing, toots? Paralee asked after getting a gander of the strange assortment of things on Caroline's bed. Have you seen my hairbrush? Caroline asked. You brush that mop top? Paralee shot back, one eyebrow cocked. Ignoring the jab, Caroline set about describing her hairbrush to Paralee. This ain't just any old five and dime hairbrush. It was passed down to me by my mama, and she got it from her mama, and my great granny got it from her mama's granny. It's a heirloom, Paralee, Caroline insisted. Don't you mean heirloom, Caroline? That's what I just said. Pay attention, Paralee. Anyway, it's awful sentimental to me, and I've just got to find it. Hmm. Do you suppose they pass down their dandruff, too? Maybe some bugs? Paralee couldn't help herself. Caroline frowned at her. Okay, I'll be serious. Tell me again, what does it look like? Well, it's a bit unusual, Caroline began, and then added detail after detail about the bristles being made of boar's hair, the rounded style of the brush head, and the fancy engraving. But with each detail she added, she noticed Paralee's face began to incrementally shift into a strange blend of shock, guilt, and amusement. Paralee was earnestly flummoxed. She didn't know whether to admit to Caroline she'd been cleaning the toilet with it because she thought her heirloom hairbrush was actually the toilet brush, 
or if she should lie her butt off, retrieve it from behind the toilet tank, shake off the water and toss it under Caroline's bed so she would find it later and be none the wiser. Paralee cursed under her breath and allowed herself to toy with the guilt of lying versus the benefits of a true friendship with Caroline. Growing more fond of her seemed to be making life less convenient for Paralee, but as she weighed her options, she remembered how Caroline's goofy smile would crease her upper lip and make her crow's feet fly upward, and how Caroline always seemed to understand her when no one else would even dare try. Damn it, she knew she would have to risk telling at least some of the truth. Looking down at her lap, she plunged in. I accidentally knocked it off the sink and it went into the toilet. I've been trying to find a place that would clean it for you before you found it missing. I'm sorry, Caroline. Paralee gushed through her best hangdog expression. Then she quickly rolled her chair into the bathroom and retrieved the hairbrush and brought it to Caroline. You should be more careful where you leave your prized possessions, she chided Caroline, so as not to appear too solicitous. Caroline eyed her roommate for a full two minutes before she dared move or speak. Early on, she had noticed Para Lee fidgeted with the rubber on the left wheel of her rolling chair when she was telling a tall tale, and she had just been playing with it like a one-armed fiddler. Now, she too found herself weighing what she suspected happened, along with her fondness for the hairbrush, against the value of her budding friendship with Paralee. Paralee watched with relief as Caroline walked over to the wastebasket and dropped the hairbrush in with a decisive plunk, then turned to her, genuinely smiled and said, Actually, it did sort of look a little bit like a toilet brush, and that thing always hurt my scalp anyway. I doubt I'll miss it long.